Sutra. With a pure wisdom eye, they entered the profound Dharma realm. Their state of wisdom had no boundaries, being ultimately pure like empty space. Just as it is in the Sushita heaven palace of this world, where all of the multitudes of bodhisattvas came and assembled in this way, so too in all of the Sushita heaven palaces of the ten directions, all those bodhisattvas having the same name also came and assembled together. And in those countries from where they came, all the Buddha's names were identical with these, without any discrimination. At that time, from the wheels of the world on at once two knees, there was emitted hundreds of thousands of millions of Nayutas of bright light, which universally illumined all worlds in the ten directions to the exhaustion of the Dharma realm and the realm of empty space. In all worlds, all those bodhisattvas could see the appearance of this Buddha's spiritual transformations, and all these bodhisattvas could also see the appearance of the spiritual transformations of all those thus come ones. Commentary: With a pure wisdom eye, they enter the profound Dharma realm. All of these great bodhisattvas have pure wisdom eyes. They pervasively enter the Dharma realm. They take the Dharma realm as their mind. They take the Dharma realm as their body, and they take the Dharma realm as their nature. Their state of wisdom had no boundaries. This kind of wisdom is the highest state of wisdom, and it has no boundaries. It also doesn't have a number or measure. It is ultimately pure. In general, the wisdom eyes is like empty space. And now, the sutra gives an analogy. What is it like? Is like empty space with nothing at all with in it. In it, just as it is in the Tushita Heaven Palace of this world, this our world, where all of the multitudes of bodhisattvas came and assembled in this way, all the great bodhisattvas came and assembled at the Tushita Heaven Palace. So too, in all of the Tushita Heaven Palaces of the ten directions, all those bodhisattvas. Having the same name, also came and assembled together within the Tushita Heaven Palace in the Sa World. There are a great many Bodhisattva attending the Dharma Assembly within the Tushita Heaven Palaces in all worlds throughout the ten directions. There are Bodhisattvas with names identical to those in the Sa World's Tushita Heaven Palace who come and assemble together in the same way. And in those countries from where they came, all the Buddha's names were identical with these, without any discrimination. Their names are also the same. This is to say that the Buddha's Dharma body pervades all places. This place has Buddhas. Other places also have Buddhas. The Buddhas are in all places. This place has Bodhisattvas. Other places also have Bodhisattvas. And these bodhisattvas and those bodhisattvas all have the same name. So are they just one? Originally, there were two. But let's use the a present day analogy to try and explain it. Do you all understand television? In one house, there is a television, and a certain image appears on the screen. In another house, it is also the same. We people rely on the scientific invention of television to make appear certain states. This is an analogy for the Buddha's kingdom of the Tushita Heaven Palace in the Saha world, while the same Buddha appears in all worlds to speak the drama. We can use the principle of television as an analogy, but the realm of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas far surpasses and transcends this state. And so these bodhisattvas with the same name have all come and assembled together. Moreover, in those countries where they came from, all the Buddha's names were identical. They all had the same name without any discrimination. There wasn't any difference in all those Buddha's titles. And so it is said, the one is measureless. The measureless is just one. This is the state of the unobstruction of phenomena with phenomena. 
at that time, right then, from the wheels of the world honored ones, Shakyamuni Buddha's two knees, there was emitted hundreds of thousands of millions of Dhanayutas, a bright light, so many dazzling rays, which universally illumined all worlds in the ten directions to the exhaustion of the Dharma realm and the realm of empty space. That light shines to the ends of the Dharma realm and empty space. In all worlds of the ten directions, all those bodhisattvas could see the appearance of these Buddha's spiritual transformations. The bodhisattvas in the worlds of the ten directions can see the Buddha and all the bodhisattvas in the Saha world. They can see the power of Shakyamuni Buddha's spiritual penetrations, and conversely, all these bodhisattvas in the Saha world could see could also see throughout the worlds of the ten directions the appearance of the spiritual transformations and all those thus come ones. They can also see the marks of all those thus come ones spiritual changes throughout the worlds of the ten directions and these appearances are all the same. Sutra All of these Bodhisattvas had in the past together with Varochana thus come one planted identical gurus and cultivated the Bodhisattva conduct. They had already awakened to and entered all Buddha's comfortable, most profound liberation and had attained the non-discriminating body of the Dharma realm. Commentary All of these Bodhisattvas in this world, Saha world, and all the other worlds of the Ten Directions are now gathered together. They convene at the Tushita Heaven Palace in the Saha world, and at the same time at the Tushita Heaven Palace throughout all worlds everywhere. Every one of them had in the past been together with Baruchana thus come one. They had planted identical good roots during the time when Shakyamuni Buddha was on the causal ground. They cultivated the same practices and planted the same good roots and cultivated the Bodhisattva conduct. They practiced the Bodhisattva way on the causal ground. They had already awakened to and entered all Buddha's comfortable, most profound liberation. Just as Shakyamuni Buddha had accomplished Buddhahood, all of these Bodhisattvas had also all awakened and entered all Buddha's comfortable, most profound liberation. They perfected the Buddha's self-mastery and attained the Buddha's liberation. Once awakened, they clearly understood the Buddha's most profound liberation and had attained the non-discriminating body of the Dharma realm. They had all obtained the non-differentiating Dharma realm body. They took the Dharma realm as their substance, as their body. They accomplished the Dharma realm's principle and substance. Sutra, they entered all lands without having a place of dwelling. They saw measureless Buddhas and went to serve them all. Within a single thought, they traveled throughout the Dharma realm comfortably and without obstruction. Their minds and thoughts were pure like priceless jewels. All the measureless, numberless Buddhas, thus come once, constantly aided them with protective mindfulness and together endowed them with strength. They had ultimately reached the foremost of other shore. Constantly, by means of pure mindfulness, they dwelt in unsurpassed enlightenment. In thought after thought, they constantly entered the places of all wisdom. By means of the small, they entered the great. By means of the great, they entered the small. Having completely attained self-mastery and unobstructed penetration, having already attained the Buddha's body, they dwelt together with the Buddhas. Commentary, they entered all lands because the Bodhisattvas have attained the Dharma body of non-discrimination. They can, by means of this Dharma body, enter all lands because they have realized the wisdom body of the Dharma realm and because all lands are contained with the Dharma realm. They don't have to go outside the Dharma realm and are able to enter all lands.
They enter all lands without having a place of dwelling. They dwell nowhere, and yet there is nowhere they do not dwell. Not anywhere, yet everywhere. This is because the Bodhisattva's body does not dwell, and yet it does not not dwell. It's not anywhere, yet it's everywhere. They saw measureless Buddhas. These measureless Buddhas also are within the Dharma realm. From beginning's time, these Bodhisattvas have taken the Dharma realm as their body. As they drew near and made offerings to these measureless Buddhas, and went to serve them all, they go before the Buddhas to serve and make offerings to them. Within a single thought, they traveled throughout the Dharma realm. One thought cannot encompass the Dharma realm, and the Dharma realm is all in one thought. They went comfortably and without obstruction. Why is it that in a single thought, these Bodhisattvas can pervade? Throughout the Dharma realm, it's because they have attained the state of unobstructed comfort. Their minds and thoughts were pure, like priceless jewels. Their minds are the same as empty space, also like priceless gems, whose value cannot be known. All the measureless, numberless Buddhas, first come ones, constantly aided them with protective mindfulness. All Buddhas, first come ones. Constantly have these bodhisattvas with protection, protection and mindfulness, and together endow them with strength. Each of the first commands of the ten directions, by means of the spiritual strength of the Buddha, is able to aid and protect these bodhisattvas. They had ultimately reached the foremost of the shore. Moreover, they are able to arrive. Of the complete, perfect, foremost parameter, the other shore, constantly by means of pure mindfulness, they dwelt in unsurpassed enlightenment. By means of pure and divine thoughts, they forever dwell in unsurpassed enlightenment, the unsurpassed wisdom sea of enlightenment. In thought after thought, they constantly entered the places of all wisdom. They are able to dwell in the wisdom sea of enlightenment. And so, in thought after thought, they constantly enter the place of all wisdom. In every moment, they constantly deeply enter this state of wisdom. By means of the small, they enter the great. They are able to form an entire world system by means of dust moles, and from this world system, they are able to enter into a dust mold. So it says, by means of the great, they enter the small. For them, the great and small are mutually and perfectly fused and unobstructed. This is due to their having completely attained self-mastery and unobstructed penetration. The Bodhisattvas have completely attained comfort, ease, and convenience of transport without obstruction. They have all penetrated through to that state. Having already attained the Buddha's body, they dwell together with the Buddhas. Why are they like this? Because they have already attained the Buddha's Dharma body, and so they dwell in the same place as the Buddhas and are the same as all Buddhas. Sutra. They had obtained all wisdom. Their bodies had come forth from all wisdom. They were all able to accordingly enter the places of all the common practices. They opened and revealed measureless dharma doors of wisdom. They reached the other shore of Varabhana's great wisdom. They obtained the Vara Samadhi and cut off all doubts and delusions. Having already attained all Buddha's self mastery of spiritual penetrations, everywhere in all countries of the ten directions, they taught, transformed, and subdued incalculable hundreds of thousands of billions of living beings. And although they were not attached to any of these numbers, nonetheless they were well able to cultivate, study, bring expedient means to ultimate perfection, and securely establish all dharmas. In this way, hundreds of thousands of billions of nayutas of ineffable, inexhaustible, impure bodhisattva mantitos, who were storehouses of all measureless merit and virtue. Throughout the three periods of time, all came and assembled at the Buddha's place. Because of this light, they could see all Buddha's places in the same way. 
at that time Vada Bandha Bodhisattva receiving the Buddha's spiritual power universally contemplated the ten directions and spoke these verses commentary they had obtained all wisdom they constantly emit the wisdom light of understanding and are without ignorance their bodies had come forth from all wisdom the wisdom body is just the buddha since they have obtained all wisdom the text says their bodies had come forth from all wisdom from wisdom is produced the wisdom body they were all able to accordingly enter the places of all the skamas practices they practice what all the thus commons practice whatever dharma draw of dust cultivate they also cultivate thus they enter the place of all thus commons practices the wisdom of each of these bodhisattvas is such that they are able to comply with and enter into all different types of wisdom whatever they may be thus they opened and revealed measureless dharma doors of wisdom they are able to enter these doors into all wisdom and are able to practice all uh, at the level of the common conduct. They can accordingly enter into these doors of wisdom and also can openly meet these entrances into wisdom. They reached the other shore of Varabhana's great wisdom. They have arrived at the solid Narayana of wisdom, which is adamantine, like the Varabhana. What is meant by other shore of wisdom? It shows the paramita reaching the other shore of prana. They obtained the vara samadhi. The vara samadhi is a very solid samadhi, and they cut off all doubts and delusions. They serve all doubts, delusions, and confusion. Having already attained all Buddha's self mastery, mastery of spiritual penetrations, everywhere in all countries of the ten directions universally pervading each and every land therein. They taught, transformed, and subdued incalculable hundreds of thousands of billions of living beings. They are able to teach, transform, and subdue them, causing them to be tamed and regulated. How many living beings are they able to subdue? They subdue hundreds of thousands of ten thousand of ten millions numberless living beings. It is not known how many living beings they are able to subdue, and although they were not attached to any of these numbers, nonetheless they were well able to cultivate, study, bring expedient means to ultimate perfection, and securely establish all dharmas. Being without attachment, they can cultivate, study, perfect, and ultimately, with skilling means, peacefully establish all dharmas. In this way, as has just been described, hundreds of thousands of billions of Nayutas of ineffable, inexhaustibly pure Buddha, uh, Bodhisattva multitudes who were storehouses of all measureless merit and virtue throughout the three periods of time, all came and assembled at the Buddha's place. And so there are hundreds of thousands of billions of Nayutas that many inexpressible inexhaustibly pure bodhisattva assemblies inexhaustibly pure means that there is no end so the pristine clarity of these bodhisattvas the three builders of time refer to the past present and future which are also inexhaustible because there isn't any end to them and since the storehouses of all measureless merit and virtue the bodhisattva multitudes extend throughout the three periods of time they are said to be measureless as well all these assemblies of bodhisattvas came and convened at the great dharma assembly they came to the buddha's way place because of this light they could see all buddha's places in the same way because of the hundreds of thousands of millions of lights which were emitted from the wheels on the Buddha's knees, the Bodhisattvas in this vast multitude could see Buddhas in all Buddha's places in the same way that they saw this one Buddha's place in the Saha world. The Bodhimandas of the Toshita heavens in all the worlds of the ten directions were just like this one in the Saha world. 
At that time, Parabena Bodhisattva, receiving the Buddha's Shakyamuni Buddha's spiritual power, which was awesome and mighty, universally contemplated the ten directions and spoke these verses. He pervasively regarded the causes and conditions of all living beings, and then used the verses to explain these Dharma doors of all kinds of wisdom. Sutra The first commons do not appear in the world. Moreover, there is no nirvana. By means of the power of original great vows, they manifest the Dharma of self-mastery. This Dharma of, is difficult to conceive of. It is not located in the mind's workings. When wisdom has arrived at the other shore, one sees all Buddha states. Commentary These verses are spoken by Varabhana Bodhisattva. This Bodhisattva stands as praise the thirst come ones. Tathagatas Thirst means they ascend the way which is thirstness. Come means they come to accomplish power enlightenment. Although there is no coming or going on the way of thirstness, it is for the sake of living beings that we say the Buddhas come and accomplish proper enlightenment. Originally, there is no coming and no going. The thirst commons are without a place from which they come and have no place to which they go. And therefore, they are named thirst commons. This is just a false name and we give them Thus come one is one of the ten titles of a Buddha. They do not appear in the world. The Buddhas are constantly in the pure land of eternal stillness and light. They are thus, thus unmoving, clear, understanding, constantly bright. Not big, not small, not inside, not outside. Without coming and without going. The Bodhisattva says that the thirst commons do not appear in the world. So how is it that living beings have seen a thirst common come into the world? It is because of their causal affinities that he manifests in the world. Because living beings' affinities have metro, he manifests the body of a Buddha and come into the world. So does he come into this world or not? Originally, the Buddha doesn't come into the world. He is unmoving with what manifests is just one of his transformation bodies. Moreover, because he doesn't come into this world, there is no nirvana. Basically, basically there isn't any nirvana. It is also because of living beings' causal conditions that he manifests nirvana. If he didn't manifest nirvana, then living beings would become too dependent upon him and just wait around for the Buddha to help them open enlightenment and accomplish Buddhahood to prevent beings from becoming overly reliant on him. He manifests first coming into the world and eventually he manifests entering Nirvana. Why does he do this? Why does he come to do something when basically there is nothing to do? It is by means of the power of original great vows. In the past, when the Buddha was cultivating, he brought forth powerful great vows. What was the power of the great vows he produced? He vowed that when he accomplished Buddhahood, he would come back to guide all living beings and help them accomplish the Buddha way. Because of the power of great vows, the Buddhas do not forsake any living being and they manifest the drama of self-mastery. Every Buddha manifests this kind of self-mastery of coming into the world and yet not coming, or entering Nirvana and yet not entering Nirvana. This is the drama of self-mastery. This drama is difficult to conceive of. Manifesting this kind of drama of self-mastery isn't something that living beings can talk about or think of. The path, the path of language is cut off the palace of the mind's workings is extinguished. It is not located in the mind's workings. This isn't a place the mind can conceive of or a state which can be attained. When wisdom has arrived at the other shore, one sees all Buddha states. By means of the Buddha's great wisdom, one is able to reach the other shore. Then one is able to see all Buddha states. If you are not able to use wisdom, to reach the other shore, 
then you will be unable to understand the states of all Buddhas.